Hello, skateboarders. Welcome to TSM Live Show, Season 6, Episode 6. I'm your host, Tommy Zam. Hey, on this episode, we have Lindsey Price, Brandon Turner, musical guest Ray Jones. You guys ready to get this show started? Let's do this. What's up, Lindsay? How hey, you hey, doing? Hey. Well, welcome on the set, dude. Thank you for having me. Definitely. How was your trip up? It was really good. It only took like 40 minutes. We're coming down from Claremont. Got some coffee, headed up, and we're here. There we go, dude. Well, some of the people know who you are and some don't. So do a small little bio about yourself. All There's right. a real small one. My name is Lindsay Price. I am just recently 24 years old. Congratulations. <laughs> Happy <laughs> <Thank> birthday. <you. laughs> um, I recently graduated from San Diego State University. I work with children. I do work with little kindergartners before and after school care. I am in, in love with skateboarding. Would, we'll get into that. <laughs> <laughs> um, I enjoy my family, the beach. I am very creative, so I paint, I draw, all, everything along those aspects. Let's see if I'm missing any big ones. I'm are. personable. I'm very friendly. If you ever see me, come say hi. <laughs> <laughs> hell yeah, hell yeah. Well, let's go back a little bit. So where did you grow up at? I actually was born in Virginia, okay. in a really small town, Waynesboro, Virginia. And I moved out to San Diego when I was four years old. So I consider myself raised in California. Oh yeah, you're basically raised. Yeah, exactly. Most of my, my I'm very habitual for a Californian compared to someone Virgin from Virginia. Exactly, <laughs> yeah. I feel yeah. you. Yep. And, and, and where did you grow up in San Diego? So I, I've got an interesting story because I was adopted. So I actually, for hold, the hold first- on, adopted from Virginia? Or? No, so I was, I, for the first 11 years of my life, I lived in Spring Valley when I was out here, um, after I came out here from Virginia. Yeah. And then once I was adopted, I moved to Pacific Beach, which is like, they are very opposite towns in San Diego. Oh, 100%. Um, yeah. Spring Valley was, it was definitely something that I would, I look back now and I'm like, I'm grateful that I got to experience like that type of life so that I could come to PV and be like, wow, now I'm really, really, really grateful <laughs> that I got to do that. That's awesome, dude. Yeah. And, and did you always, did you start skateboarding in PV or when did you start skateboarding? So I, I've always been able to ride a skateboard. I rode my skateboard to and from high school, but it, it was just nothing serious. It was a penny board, plastic board, you know. And I really got into skating 2018. Okay. And I was just going on some cruises. I had like a Sector 9 board and my friends would, would invite me on these cruises and I'm like, I'm down to cruise. I'd go around there popping ollies, kickflips, and I'm like, I want to do that. Like, I don't want to cruise anymore. Yeah, yeah. And I just had one like realization where I was like, I'm just taking myself to the skate shop. I'm going to go, I'm going to ask the guys, what do I do? What do I want to start? And sure enough, yeah, I went to Pacific Drive and they hooked it up from the whole setup. They walked me through everything let me like step on some boards and I was just absolutely hooked after that. My lunch break, I took that board and like all ate in the back parking lot. Whoa. My boss came out, he's like, you're not gonna land it like today. I'm like, yeah, I am, I'm gonna figure it out. I'm at least get off the ground. <laughs> <laughs> and I did, and it was definitely something that I fell in love with right away. I was just like, wow, I, I'm excited to see where this journey is gonna take me. Okay, okay, and, and you graduated from SDSU, correct? Yeah. Uh, I, what, what was that like? So I had an interesting spiel with college. Fresh out of high school, I went to play Division I lacrosse. I loved lacrosse and hated the team dynamic. <laughs> so I got out of there. And I came back to California and I had a little bit of time where I wasn't doing much. I was trying to figure it out. I was 19 years old and I'm figuring out my first job, all of that stuff. And I just had a lot of free time. So I was like, huh, let me take it from there. Um, I started at Mesa College and I did like a transfer pathway. So it set me up perfectly to go straight to San Diego State. And I knew that I wanted to graduate with a psych degree. San Diego State has a pretty accredited psych program. So I was just hoping that 
that will help me in the future. I'm yeah. still kind of on the fence about what I want to do next. Okay, okay. Might go back and get my teaching certification. But San Diego State was a enormous school compared to like anything that I've seen before. Okay. I did stay out of like the college life though. I, I went in, you, you I went want, to my classes, to, I graduated, yeah. I left. You yeah. didn't want to do the party life, huh? No, I didn't do any of that. And I tried to like, honestly, I love college sports, but I knew that the only way to get my education done was to get in there and go to the classes and get it done. Yeah, yeah that's sick, dude. And did, yeah. you, did you skate the, all your classes and stuff? I, like did, I did skate a lot on campus. San Diego State is a bike and skate friendly campus and they have lots of like little hill bombs that are super yeah. fun navigating through all the people there's so many like students there that's awesome it's fun hell yeah and yeah. then you gave us a video tell us about this video about to watch i did give you a video it's about like a minute and a half i threw together some of my absolute favorite clips maybe they're my favorite tricks some of them are associated with like favorite feelings that i had some of them are just like big laughs my favorite is probably we'll we'll see a something keep, at keep, Colonia Skate Park. So keep, that's one keep of the a good ones. There. Yep. <laughs> well, you ready to show the whole world it? Let's do it. All right, guys. Here's <laughs> Lindsay Price's video. Let's check it out. Hell yeah, that was a dope ass video, dude. That's sick, dude. Thank you. Dude, I love that 5 to tell. Yep. Dude, tell us, take us back to that day. All right, that, that was actually probably one of my favorite clips inside that video. It's filmed at Colonia Skate Park about 25 minutes from my place, but we got up early. That was actually a sunrise sesh. So if you know me and you know I skate, you'll probably never see me at the skate park <laughs> because I'm there in the morning. Um, so we did a sunrise sesh that day. And we got up, we got coffee, we headed there, me and one of my friends, Haley. And it was actually one of my first sessions back from like a little, a little rest break that I took. And I remember thinking like, I can just go hard. Like, I feel good. This is the time that I can do it. So usually on that quarter pipe, I would hit just a like big 5-0 grind. And I was like, kept going into tail on accident, bailing to my knees over and over, same thing. And I'm like, that's it, I'm going to tail, I'm gonna just send it. I heard the sound once and I was like, I need to do that, like all the way. If I don't take it, I'm gonna be mad probably until I come back here again and land it. Oh, yeah. That was a fucking dope trick. Yeah, right? that was one of my favorites. And, and, for sure. and so skateboarding and, and what you're doing, what you graduated in, do you feel like that's gonna help out kids? Because you, you work with kids, five, you said kindergarten, five yeah. year olds and stuff like that. Absolutely. Do, do you use skateboarding as a way to teach them? So I, I actually, I'm gonna let you in on like a little secret. I just I'll, I'll really, put, I'll put my ear there. Right? <laughs> I really just aspire to incorporate skateboarding into, you know, foster care because okay. I've got a little bit there. That's we, awesome. A lot of foster care doesn't have um, like enrichment programs, so they have a lot of the basics. You know, you get fed, you get a roof over your head, you get all of that, which is more than what these kids have, but. There's not so many like how to apply, or how to gain life skills. I, mean, I think skateboarding is the perfect spot to do that. So I think it's a wonderful opportunity to like bring that into that arena mm -hmm. and see where it goes from there. But really to answer your question, it's like every, every kid should be on a skateboard. If they can, why not? It, it, yeah. it teaches you everything. Um, the main thing I, al I always like reflect on the fact that Creativity is something that all of us have. People are like, I'm not creative, and yeah, you are. You just need to figure out how to pull that out. 
And like they say, they say creativity is like a spark. Yeah. I, well, I set mine on fire, put a gas line through it when I stepped on a skateboard. Pyro! <laughs> there you go, pyro skateboards there. <laughs> and I really did. I absolutely set my creativity spark on fire. I think that that's what happens to pretty much anyone that gives themselves the space to do that. If you don't, it's a flame. Like I said, it's going to smother you. You are going to feel well, how do I get this out of my body? How do I create freely? All of that. And I think that's what kids benefit from the most is yeah. they are like little vulnerable imagination beings. So <laughs> get them creativity and they'll their worlds just open up. That's awesome. A million and then, times. And you have sponsors too, right? Yeah. Pyro Skateboards. <laughs> I'm on Pyro Skateboards. Definitely one of my biggest like accomplishments up to date now. I never envisioned myself being on a team again. Really? Oh yeah, from across, I left yeah. Division One Sports because teams. The dynamic was absolutely just not it for me. There was a little East Coast, West Coast difference that I was like, oh, I don't know how to interact here as much as I do on, on the West Coast. Yeah. But, but other than that, it's just like, I really am grateful to have a, a little group of supporters. My, it's like my Pyro family. I yeah. love them. And, and you got to think too, you know, with, you know, lacrosse and skateboarding teams and stuff like that, it's way different. You yeah. Know? It's, it's skateboarding is more family. You mm -hmm. know, you ride for a, a company or a shop. Exactly. Or whatever. It's a exactly. family. Yeah. You know, where where class is not really a family. It is, but not. You you also like hold your hold your teammates to different standards in a way than you do in like an actual team dynamic. When I was at college, it's like, it was so, everybody needs to play their part so that we can do everything perfectly. But for skateboarding, it, being on a team for me, it's just like, everybody needs to do the absolute best they can, work on their perseverance, resilience, dedication, all of those things. And you have six or seven people that are there to back that up. Yeah. It's not just you, you yeah. know? but it's your show when you're doing the skating. Exactly. I don't need someone to start my 50-50 grind so I can finish it. <laughs> uh, that's all me, but I'm gonna have them there and they're gonna tell me all that, that I need to hear. Definitely, you definitely. Know? And, and, and when, they, when Pyro came to you to ask you to ride for a team, what was, what was your feeling? Like, were you nervous, were you scared, were you excited, or, or what? How'd you I, feel? I, was, I think I was ecstatic. Like, it, it happened over the phone. I remember being like, there's no way that this is real right now. Like, that, that's, I just didn't envision it at all. I, when I stepped foot on a skateboard, it was purely, purely for me. I didn't know that I would ever be introduced to so many people that, w that are very, very valuable to me. And I, it was ecstatic, definitely. Like, I was in, infatuated with the idea of diving just headfirst into like the skateboarding world, aside from actually riding the skateboard. Yeah. Because that's not what it's about. <laughs> it's not about what you can do on the skateboard. So. And, and then, do you have something coming up, anything coming up for 2023? Ooh, for 2023. Well, for me personally, um, I'm really excited. I'm taking a, a two week Europe trip. Oh, congratulations. I yeah. found that. So that'll be really, really exciting towards the end of August. Um, we're gonna go through Paris, Nice, what? Ibiza what? with two of my Bushy best you are, I know, yeah. right? <laughs> with two of my best girlfriends. So that that's definitely like one of my biggest things that I have coming up. Oh, yeah. Any any skate videos you're gonna drop soon or full we parts? Just keep your eye out for Pyros, you know, for what Pyro will be dropping. I believe it is somewhere in August. Okay, okay. And and the last question, what can you say to the upcoming skaters that wanna be where you're at? Or or somebody that's in foster that sees what you're doing yeah. where they wanna be at. What can you say to them right now? What I would say to them as a skater is practice makes progress, but as a person, you learn dedication, perseverance, and resilience, which are like my, my three things that I give myself through experiences. So just go, go live, experience everything that you can. And it's not gonna be in one little arena that you perfect your craft in, and regardless, no one respects your craft anyways. So <laughs> just go do it, live, figure out what, what you need to do to keep it going but just keep on keep it going hell yeah hell yeah that's yeah. sick dude well Lindsay, thank you for coming on the show you ready to check out yeah. ray jones yes i am all right coming up next is ray jones thanks for coming on thank you for having me
What's up, Ray? How uh, you doing what today? What up, my G? Good to see you, man. Well, well welcome, coming, welcome to Prince Park. Ah, appreciate it, dude. Love it here. Love it here, dude. It's such a beautiful day today. Beautiful day, dude. How was your drive up? Pretty mellow, actually. Because you're just close by. Yeah, right? it's pretty chill. So you just like jumped over here and yeah, and... topped over real quick. <laughs> <laughs> nah, stoked the sun's out though in the real, dude. It's been cloudy. It's been I know. crazy. But they said we haven't seen the sun since like February. That's wild. Dude, now. Right, beautiful. Now we're gonna see the sun every day. Gotta love San Diego. Oh, dude. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I think everybody went crazy. They couldn't see the clouds. You know, couldn't see sun or anything. Oh yeah, dude. It was starting to feel like the East Coast, man. <laughs> I was like, what did I do? <laughs> what did I do? <laughs> well, some of the listeners know who you are, and some don't. Right. Tell, right. tell us a little about you. Uh, That's a small little bayou. Name's Ray Jones. Uh, from South Jersey, right near Philly. You know what I mean? Kind of grew up. What up? What up? Gee, shout out Julio. It's good, son. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah, Grand Jury in the building. Um, yeah, dude, kind of grew up between the city and the beach and the woods, <laughs> best of both worlds, you know what I mean? Uh, dude, been doing music since I was like 11 and skateboarding since I was probably like eight or nine, yeah. you know? That's been pretty much it, dude. I saw the Shorty's Guilty video and I was like, this is what we're doing. <laughs> I'm gonna DJ, you know what I mean? I'm gonna rap, I'm gonna skateboard, like this is how we're coming. And it's never stopped. Oh yeah, that's sick, dude. <laughs> and now we're here. Now, now you're here, right here, sitting right here. here. dude. It's pretty much how it happened. <laughs> and you say you grew up in Philly, correct? Yeah, yeah, right next to Philly, so South Jersey. South Jersey? So okay. like, if you know about Jersey, South Jersey's Philly. So it's not Brick City? Nah, that's North Jersey. Okay, if you're from North okay. Jersey, you're a New York guy, pretty much. <laughs> South Jersey, you're Philly. Okay, okay. Yeah. So what was it like growing up there? It was chill, you know? There's some rough parts, you know what I mean? Uh, like I said, best of both worlds, dude. I went to school down the shore, we had a serve team. Then my school I went to to play football in high school, we had like metal detectors. So I was like, <laughs> you know what I mean? I saw it all for sure. Hold on, you used to play football? I did play football, man. What, what, I was a college football you, player. What'd you, what'd you play? Uh, defensive end, dude. What? Yeah, I was a defensive end. For was, college end? Yeah. yeah, played in college, what? high school. Might have could have went to the league, but I bailed and came, Why? To, came to California. <laughs> you could have you could have been like but if you would have if you would have made it to the NFL, who would you want to play for? Probably the Eagles eventually, yeah. just because that's the hometown squad. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, the that's Eagles, sick. the Eagles for sure. Or the or out here, back in Chargers, we're in we San Diego back in my place. Used to be right over here. Right, that would be nice too. <laughs> yeah, you there, in Philly. And, and you skateboarded in New Jersey. That's how you got. Into yeah, man, grew up skating my whole life, dude. I was always into skating. I actually, it's funny. I read Brandon. I had Brandon's posters on my wall as a no kid. No way. Oh yeah, dude. Him, Smolik, all those dudes. <laughs> It's actually, yeah, it's a, life's a trip. Life's a trip. Life is a trip. And, 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 and gr now you're out here hanging out with Brandon and Smolik and all that, and, and they're your childhood. When you first met him, what was it like, dude? Bro, it's funny. I was telling Brandon the other day, I'm like, I've known you for like probably 12, 13 years now. And I was like, I just stopped fanning out being around all you guys low key. <laughs> you know, I never showed it, but I'd be like, damn, like I, can't believe I'm sitting here right now. You know what I mean? Hanging out with them. Right. <laughs> yeah, man, they're like family now too. It's like life's a trip. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's sick, dude. That's sick. That's sick that you live you're living your dream right now, you know? That you never thought you would be. Right. You know, I mean coming from Jersey, now you're hanging out with Brandon and Smolik and right. all these heads for like twelve years. Yeah. I mean, how's that make you feel? Ah, uh, dude. Just humbled, blessed, you know? It's East Coast, man, you know, you don't you don't get it right in front of you like you do in California, you know? Yeah. There's, there's a skate scene, obviously, but, you know, the weather and just the conditions and stuff, so just blessed, man. I'm, I'm thankful every day. <laughs> Hell yeah. That's sick, dude. It's cool. That's yeah. and, and I know what you mean, because when I first met Matt Hensley, I grew up watch, grew up watching A Street and, right. and you know, what, you know, Matt Hensley what got me inspired to more skateboard, and I right. was the same way with you. Matt Hensley posters all up and down on my walls yeah, and stuff like that and everything. And when I told him, I first met him, I think it was the Plan B and Firm demo and in Beach Plus in Fulton Beach. And I was like, first met him, I was like, yo, man, I, 
I used to look up to you. Straight up. It was very like thankful and very humble and shit. Right. But, but I, I feel what you're saying. Yeah, man. <laughs> it's like, you know, it's all written in the stars. It's yeah. like meant to be. You know? Exactly, exactly. So let's talk a little bit about music. So you started getting into music when you were 11 years old. So was it like, did your parents were musicians? Did they inspire you to music? Like what got you into that? So always was into hip hop. I had a cousin when I was like 12 who threw out my like P. Diddy CDs and was like, here's some Wu-Tang and some Mo's Death. This is what we're doing. <laughs> So, you're, you're a P. Diddy fan. Uh, right, right. I had like the P. Diddy album. They had the shiny suits oh, on, you know? Yeah. My cousin <laughs> shut that down and busted with some real hip hop. Um, and then from there, I never looked back. I'm pretty sure I got the Shorties video about a month or two after that. And they were DJing in it. I mean, in the intro, they yeah, had yeah. turntables. I was like, I need turntables. Like, that's going to complete <laughs> my whole kit. <laughs> and uh, that's how I got into music, dude. I started DJing. And me and the homie got recording equipment. We were record. We were recording for like 25 year olds when we were like 14. I don't know why his mom was letting this happen. These dudes are paying us to record on our like. Eight. I swear to God, that's that's how it kicked off. And one day, as everybody was rapping about balling and shooting people, we were like, "Nah, we're about to rap," you know. And we were super anti-commercial, just like political raps at like 15 years old. <laughs> Yeah, dude, that's how it started. You know I'm missing this right now in my head. Oh, for sure. You're over here. What's up, uh, guys? I gotta hey. send you the tapes, dude. We were called the Political Prophets. No like, way. 14 and 15 years Dude, old. that's fucking sick, Shout dude. out to homie J. Buck, dude. He knows. Yeah, that's sick. So, oh, yeah. so then your music brought you out here. Yeah, yeah. So I'm trying to think how it went down. Um, While I was playing college football, like this is around when it started getting serious, I was running back and forth to Philly to do shows. What? And like the shows just kept kind of getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And uh, when I stopped playing football, I was kind of like, all right, like I'm good at other stuff, I think. You know? <laughs> so I started pursuing music. Um, I lucked out. That's when I was like trying to shop my stuff around the labels and stuff. And one of the homies, he was working at Sony. He was an A and R. He like took us under his wing to develop us or whatever. But mm -hmm. he ended up linking me up with some big artists, and that's pretty much how it got going on like a serious level. And then uh, I ended up meeting Brandon like a few years after that. Ah, sick. Dude. Right. Yeah. And, man. and how'd you meet Brandon? Dude, a, f a mutual friend he was like, "Oh, you guys do music and skate. You got to meet my friend Brandon. He does music and he skates." And I'm not, I'm like, Brandon, you know who? Yeah, I wonder yeah. who it is. And boom, B Turner. And Smolik's like, <laughs> I'm like, it's it, it, like this, like, whoa. <laughs> crazy, dude. Yeah, I'll never forget that, man. Uh, yeah, Brandon's a real one, dude. He, uh, we ended up hanging out all night. You know, this is back in the day. We were like out partying or whatever. He came to my show the next day, skipped his flight to Europe, and was like, yo, like, I'm going to take your music with me. Like, when I get back, like, it's on. And um, so he went, got back, and I met the whole team like the whole mafia and everything i think we did some like interview for trans world that day and never looked back dude, yeah, dude, <laughs> dude, fucking, dude you're living a dream right there ah dude it's been crazy and, hell yeah and, and you got a song you're gonna perform with us tell us about this yeah dude i got this song called good times okay record i think i recorded it last summer to be honest um yeah i don't know i've been rapping for a while but i like reggae and like alternative music too i'm trying to make some feel good tunes you know what i mean Honestly, okay. during COVID, I was like, I need to make some stuff I could sit down and perform that'll still be just as good. Because I didn't think there was ever going to be like crazy crowds again. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. But now I guess we're back. So. Oh, <laughs> you ready to show the world this? Oh, hell yeah, man. There you go. Looking forward to it. Check out Good Times right oh, here. Yeah. Much love, everybody. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I've been working on like a bunch of different music and shit. I haven't really got a chance to play it, so this is cool. I said I can't go back to being broke no more Go more hanging out at the liquor store no more Said the cops can't kick in my dough no more So everything's gonna be alright I'm only here for a good time Not a long time And I'm feeling so right It can be the wrong time It's gonna be a long night Yeah And everything's gonna be alright I'm only here for a good time Not a long time And I'm feeling so right It can be the wrong time It's gonna be a long night Yeah and everything's gonna be alright uh, If I take a couple things from this life I'm grateful for all the good people by my side Sometimes the days don't feel so bright Maybe you could be my life Damn baby, you might be my type Trying to play it cool even though I'm hype uh, Anyway with you is oh so right It's oh so right It's oh so nice Yeah it's yeah, so, oh so right, it's yeah, so, oh so nice, yeah. It's yeah, so, oh so right, it's yeah, so, oh 
so right, yeah. I said I can't go back to being broke no more. No more hanging out at the liquor store no more. Said the cops can't kick in my door no more. So everything's gonna be all right. I'm only here for a good time. Not a long time, and I'm feeling so right. It can't be the wrong time, it's gonna be a long night, yeah. And everything's gonna be all right. I'm only here for a good time. Not a long time, and I'm feeling so right. It can't be the wrong time, it's gonna be a long night, yeah. And everything's gonna be all right. Damn, baby, you might be my type. For a second, they had your boy under the night. World so cold, tried to get me ice. Had to roll my dice, had to pay my price. I was pondering where it ain't so bright. Maybe you could be my life. Trying to play it cool, even though I'm high. Anyway, with you is so so right. Yeah. I said I can't go back to being broke no more. No more hanging out at the liquor store no more. Said the cops can't kick in my door no more. So everything's gonna be alright. I'm only here for a good time. Not a long time, and I'm feeling so right. It can be the wrong time, it's gonna be a long night. Yeah. And everything's gonna be alright. I'm only here for a good time. Not a long time, and I'm feeling so right. It can be the wrong time, it's gonna be a long night. Yeah. And everything's gonna be alright. Yeah, so, so right. Yeah, so, so nice. Yeah. Dude, that was sick, uh -huh. eh? I, I love it, man. The beats oh, yeah. and the lyrics and everything, Thank dude. You. Like, Thank you. And how, how do you write your lyrics? How, like, do you sit down, like, it takes you a while to write it or what? Dude, I, I write pretty fast, man. It takes like, like 20, 25 minutes to write really? a song. I normally, but like, I guess in retrospect, like, I'll catch the melody first and fill in the words afterwards. Okay. That makes it easier. It's a so, trick. So, so, so you're like, boom, 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 and then you like, tuck, 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 right. Tuck, tuck, I'll spend boom. days just humming it and getting like the vibe down, and then out of nowhere the words will come. Dude, that's sick. You know, it's like filling in the blanks after you once you get the melody now. Yeah, I, I can't do that, man. I, I try to rhyme sometimes. I'll throw some, you know, they give me the mic, I'll be like, blah, 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 blah. Right. right I got <laughs> I'm good, I'm you good. You probably got some bars, <laughs> I, I know you can spit a quick freestyle. Hey, if it took some minute, I would do it, you know? <laughs> right. And oh, yeah. one of the questions I want to ask you is, you know, being a skateboarder and being a musician, like, how's that work together with you? Like, do you see, like, it working good being a skater and being a musician? Oh, yeah, like, man. It all goes hand in hand, you know? It's, it's all art at the end of the day. Uh -huh. um, I've always appreciated the hip-hop influence on skating, you know? And then vice versa. I mean, these days, skating pretty much influences everything. Mm -hmm. I think. I think skating, everywhere you look, if you look into the nooks and crannies, there's skating involved somehow. Yeah. Whether it's from a fashion sense, the person behind the camera, the person behind like the, the graphics or the design or something, you know? Yeah. It's like uh, skateboarding is one of those things where like, you know, people are, they do that, but they're all, they all have these other talents, you know? Yeah. So, that's, yeah. That's sick. Thing goes hand in hand, dude. That's sick, dude. And and you have a, a label you're starting or something like that? I, uh, I, I heard I heard I heard, hey. I heard something in the, in the birds. Or just just keep a look out. Ears. Just keep a look out for Youth Nation Empire, man. It's coming soon. Tell us a little about that. Uh, there's only only a little bit I can say. Uh, <laughs> just know just know it's happening. It's coming. Youth Nation. 2023. You hear right, that? Right. It's Check all happening, out. dude. <laughs> and, and do you have anything coming up for 2023 other than the label? Yeah, man, dude. We're actually like so. I just literally I'm like repackaging everything. So I've been recording a bunch of music. Probably gonna put out some albums, about to shoot some videos, just get some shows going, hopefully playing some tours, maybe get on some of these festivals. I got a lot of things I'm like cooking up right now. We're, we're making sure it goes like super proper this time around. Okay. Yeah. And, and where can people find your music? Do you have an Instagram? Yeah, hey, stuff? right now? Yeah, just follow me on Instagram. Ray Jones underscore SM4L, dude. Skate Mafia for life. All that good shit. Do you have a podcast, like a not podcast, but you have a music platforms or anything? Or yeah, that? all my stuff will be back on Spotify soon. I literally just, I took everything down because we're about to put it out to yeah. the label and whatnot. But uh, you, Ray Jones, you look me up, you'll find me. All it's right, out and, there. and the last question of the day. What can you say to the upcoming musicians, skateboarders, someone that wants to live your dream, what can you say to them? Dude, just don't stop, man. Keep going. Don't stop, pursue your dreams. Make a plan maybe, maybe you have a plan, but just don't stop, dude. Keep going, even when it gets hard. Hell That's yeah. my best advice. Hell, Hell yeah. yeah. Thank you hey, for coming on, man. Love, G. Thanks for having me, bro. Hell yeah, G. Well, right. Coming up next is Brandon Turner. Cha. Much love, G. Yeah. Yee. Go skateboarding day, son. Cha. <laughs> <laughs> Killer. 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 Killer.
It ain't the best part of waking up. Kill a coffee, baby, all day in your cup. Cold brew, mix it in with a latte, cappuccino. I say that coffee got moxie, the right stuff. Rich Colombian beans, marble cake. You hear the drip, we make dreams delicious. Sipping on delicious Killers. coffee. Now that's killer, right? Now that's killer, killer right? Coffee. What's up, Brandon? How you doing? Yo, yo, what's good? How Thanks for coming better? on the show, man. Yeah. Absolutely. Happy go skateboarding day. Exactly, dude. You know I mean? How was the ride up? It was chilling, you know, good, a good 45 minutes from San Diego, but it was all good. Yeah, not too bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You didn't get hit up in that Del Mar fair? Nah, I man, I went, I went right past it, real, <laughs> real slow like. <laughs> <laughs> well, some people know who you are. Some of the listeners might not know who you are. Can you give a little bio about yourself? Uh, small, like a small little bio. I'm Brandon Turner. I'm a professional skateboarder. Uh, for Skate Mafia, Independent Trucks, um, other companies, and uh, my own uh, treatment center, Westside Recovery. Okay. Mm -hmm. Hell yeah. And and how'd you get into skateboarding? Uh, when I was two years old, a uh, surfer was skating past my mom's house every day, and I would run out there every day, and he put me on the front of his board, and it was it was a, a wrap since then. Hell yeah. Yeah. And do you remember your first board was? It was a He-Man. A He-Man? Oh, sick. It was a He-Man board with a skid tail. Oh, what? Yeah. <laughs> yep. I mean, my first board was actually was an ants board with all the ants on it and yeah, everything yeah, from Walmart yeah. and stuff. Okay. Well, no, I don't think it was Walmart back then. It was like Kmart back yeah, in the day and stuff sure. like that. So did you, you grew up in San Diego? This is where you grew up and everything? Grew up in San Diego, moved to Japan, was, uh, lived there, part of my, uh, getting my childhood, and then that's when I started skateboarding like more seriously, moved back to San Diego at 12, 13, and uh, then got my first sponsor, Boy Skateboards. Pat, where you at? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, and then um, Shorty Skateboards after that, you know, Cyrus Shoes, and uh, now Skate Mafia. Hell yeah, and, and you said Japan. What was it like growing up in Japan? Uh, it was amazing, the future. You really? Know? Tell us yeah. a little, little about it. Uh, well, I. I uh, met my brother in Japan, Tom Nariongo, and he mentored me, taught me my first kickflip, taught me Japanese. I actually got my first like shop sponsor there, Wild Boys, and then um, it was just a wrap from then. I was locked in and then moved to America and continued the dream. And did you feel like, you know, is it like skateboarding different in Japan and then compared to America? Did you have to adjust a little bit or what? Um, it, was, it was a big adjustment, just like culturally, you know? Whole different culture, um, way different than America. You had to, I had to learn a different language. It was, a, it was definitely a culture shock. So you were just like, whoa. Yeah, 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 exa exactly. <laughs> and, and and growing, I mean, you get on shorties. I mean, how'd you get on shorty? Did the Chad call you up or something, or like? I used to go to Pacific Drive as a kid, and Chad Muska was down there, took notice of me. I was on voice skateboards, and then hit me up and was like, you want to ride for Shorty's? Shorty's was like a brand new company that was popping. I looked up to Chad and then we kept it, you know, we yeah. started rocking from there and that's when everything was was a wrap. Because you were like, what, 12 years old when you got on Shorty's or something like that? 13? No, I was, I was 15. 15? Yeah, yeah. And, and what was it like when Chad called you up and was like, yo, come on Shorty's? Oh man, it was a dream Were you nervous? <laughs> yeah, I was nervous. I mean, I knew Chad and everything, but when I realized it was real, when I got that first shorties box and with literally everything in there from boards, bolts, bangs, grip tapes, clo clothes, it was just, it was cracking and we just started hitting the road from there. So it was, it was like, amazing. it was, it was like a Christmas present, right? When you got your board, you're like, whoa, yeah, it, was, it was like a first real Christmas. Hell know? yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then, and then your parents were super stoked. They let you go on tours and everything or? Yeah, yeah. Um, they were they were super protective at first because I was young and still in school, so they had to talk to you know the team manager George Nagai, and before that it was Ken and Pat, and just making sure I had supervision and stuff. You know? Yeah. 
And what was the, what was the most memorable thing that you have with sorting sets? Something that always stick to you? Just, just traveling the crazy tours and just constantly being on the road and the, the amount of support the fans had and winning awards and best team and just it was just every I lost track of time. Because I remember shorties. I mean, you, when you guys went on tour, I mean, it was like you guys were like rock stars, like overseas and stuff like that. People yeah. would come out and chase you guys. I remember, was it Chad Musk they chased? Yeah, no, yeah, that would chase Chad, you know. And then when we would. Uh, have demos and stuff like sometimes there was no room to even skate it was just like we were there signing and there was no there's no even room to even skate damn that's crazy that's how many people there were so well, that was your first when you first went on your tour with you were you shocked when you see all those people or yeah i was shocked but i was just grateful we were there with our team we had all the support we needed and we were there to skate and film and show love and just inspire through you know what we love so much is the art of skateboarding. Yeah, that's right, dude. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, just to experience that at 15 to travel the world and, and be noticed as as that that guy from Shorties. You know what I mean? Like, whoa. Yeah, no, know. it was it was a definitely a surreal experience. You know. Oh yeah, definitely was. And do you remember like like when you went out filming um, Guilty and stuff like that? Do, do you remember how hard it was to? land all your tricks and stuff like that or what or did you have like no, a, did you have a plan was, of what it wasn't did? hard at all i never like went out and filmed for a part ever like mm -hmm. it was all just having fun and then we would just put it together like i never was like oh i'm filming a part and let's let's film for it i just it was just all raw having fun and you didn't have a list or anything like certain tricks you want to do or now er earlier in my Earlier in my years when uh, Dave Soshbach when boy skateboards, he, he taught me how to like make a list and work on tricks and stuff, but when it was uh, shorties, we, we were just, that was just pure fun. Other people were filming for parts, but me personally, I never filmed for a part. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And how did, um, how did, did skate? I was filming, yeah. obviously, but just having fun. Yeah, and that's all about it is about yeah. having fun on skateboard yeah. and, and doing the love and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. And, and then when Skate Mafia come, that was like you and Smolik, or is that how? Yeah, that... and Smolik at first, and then uh, the idea came with Shorties, you know, and Muska, and then eventually uh, Dan and Preebs and all partnered together, and it was, it was amazing. And that's what Skate Mafia is today: Dan, Preebs, and the rest of the team. Yeah, and how did that all start it up? Like, basically, like, how do y'all all start up Skate Mafia? Uh, just homies being homies and starting to make shirts and getting boards in just the organic way, you yeah. know? Just doing it with, with a plan on paper. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> plan on paper. That's how. That's how it went down. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And then Osiris too, man. I, I mean, that's a big thing for you too, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And that was just because San Diego Shoe Company, and we were all on different shoe companies like S Etnies and stuff. And San Diego Shoe Company, like, hey, let's let's make it happen. Yeah. Of course, they go all day, you know. Yeah, you gotta represent, man. Yeah, yeah, all day. And, and so, you know, like, you, things, you know, things in life change and stuff for you and stuff like that, you know? I mean, you know, but you still skateboard. Yeah. And, and that's what's great about it, you know? Like, you, you know, you, you've done a lot of things in life and traveled and stuff, and, and you inspired a lot of these kids on all these tricks that you've done. And how's that make you feel? Like, does it, you know, what's your, like, when kids come up to you and say, oh, I'm Brandon Turner. How you doing, man? Like, thank you for what you're doing in skateboarding. How's oh, that make you feel? Well, it makes me feel good and just grateful that uh, we have such an amazing supportive community as skateboarders. It's really the, di the diversity we have that stands us apart from any sport or anything done. And we all know that skateboarding special. And I always tell people if you, anywhere you travel in the world or go, as long as you have your board, you always have a friend, you know, because you know, you fall on the ground and you don't even have to know somebody, you know that you know that they're gonna be there to support you. Yeah. And we all have our best interests is just to have fun and and uh, you know, continue to progress. And and like I mean you done like lately you done you done a lot of cool stuff. Like you did that went down to Wahlberg, you did you killed Wahlberg by the way. Thank you, thank you, thank <laughs> you. You showed it down. I don't think anybody can touch Wahlberg anymore. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Can you take us to that day? Uh yeah, it's just a lot of meditation and uh, support from my teammates flew out there. 
I flew there one time and I forgot my board, so I had a brand new Christmas board. It didn't work out. We went there and in the morning and it was super nerve wracking and didn't eat no food and had to put the ramp together and we, we, we made it happen. And it was uh, it's something I've been wanting to do for 20 years. So oh, really? it was a it was a it was a big accomplishment for me personally. So what, so were you like? When you landed it, did you did the heart like pound like, oh my god, oh, I finally yeah. did it, you know? It's exactly how I seen it when I visualized it. So it was it was it was like a dream. You were just like, thank you. Yes, yes, <laughs> absolutely. And and you're doing a lot of stuff right now. Like what, what so you're doing West Side Recovery. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so West Side Recovery is a substance abuse, um, dual diagnosis, uh, rehab facility. And I wanted to I wanted to create a rehab that didn't have the stigma of like being in jail and I really wanted to create these programs like skateboarding, yoga, Pilates, uh, music program, like everything that's inspired art, everything that's inspired me in my life so people can feel connected in a different way than that they just have a problem and they need to fix it. And I wanted to make it more of what we have in skateboarding is like, hey, we all have something in common and it's a community that we can all work together to get through to, together. Yeah. Yeah. And how do people get in touch? How like how can they get in touch if they have wanted to be part of that? Through um, WestsideRecoverySD.com, um, our Instagram, the West Side Recovery. Um, you can call 619-796-9611 and you know check your verification of benefits and depending on what's going on with you. Um, whether you go to rehab or not, or a program, you know, we're there for support and also for resources. Yeah, and, and, and so is there a reason why you started West Side Recovery? Like, were like previous Absolutely. incidents or anything? Well, because I think all of us um, have been through our, our own traumas and li life is hard and we've all been through, you know, difficulties in, in life. And I've went through my difficulties even though I, I've been super successful, you know, still mentally and spiritually, you know, I've, I've had trauma and I, it was really hard for me to dig myself out of a, a hole and I was really stubborn and stuck to these stigmas that um, I have a problem and, you know, I, I felt like I was the only one going through it. So when I finally got the tools to get out of it and get my true power back up, um, I wanted to be able to create a safe space that I can show people uh, the same journey I went through and hopefully help them through my experience as well. As well. Yeah, and, and do you think like skateboarding is very important for mental health? Absolutely. I mean, skateboarding offers a, the best le lesson in life because skateboarding is constant failure every single day and skateboarding is a just like life like you're gonna fail in life and it's not what you do when you fall it's what you do when you pick yourself back up no it's 100 percent. i mean because there's a lot of kids out there that you know get into skateboarding to, to better themselves in lives and get out there and i mean that's the same with me too you know like you know skateboarding is to me is like it's about getting out there freedom and and you know if you have a stressful day you just jump on your board and you just land that trick and you're just like yes yeah you know? skateboarding is like meditation you can't really think of anything else while you're skating or you probably eat shit you know? yeah definitely <laughs> <laughs> definitely definitely and and do you feel like you know skateboarding is better now and grown or do you think skateboarding is better than what it was before yeah, I think skateboarding is always better. It's definitely different. Everyone has more access through social media and the internet to have access to whatever they want. So a lot of progression, you know, it's uh, on, on a world scale more accepted. So yeah, I think it's for the better. You know, some parts I'm like from an old school foundation so that I, I don't agree with, but that's just my own biased opinion. And yeah. you know, everything can't be our way. And that's no. part of growth. Oh, no, that's true. And, and, <laughs> and, and what do you think will ever change that old school way? I think skateboarding is constantly progressing, whether that's going backwards or forward in the same way as, and you can look at it as in fashion, you know? Yeah. People are dressing, you know, it's, it's always changing and evolving. So, you know, skateboarding's here to stay forever. So. Yeah. I mean, look at it, like skateboarding now is going back. Like I see the kids now yeah. wearing like 
stuff that we used to wear back in the 90s, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. it, it's crazy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's amazing. I love to see it. Oh, yeah, definitely. That's how and, it should be. Oh, 100%. <laughs> you know, they, they copy what you used to wear, the TSA yeah, pants. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly, exactly. And do you feel like um, what you're doing for skateboarding and for people in general, is it helping? Do you see, like, a lot Absolutely. of like, things? Absolutely. It's, uh, I believe it's, it's inspiring, it's helping, and, well, it's not just about me, it's like, Skateboarding has given so much to me. It's not about what I can get out of skateboarding, it's what I can get back. And this is my way of giving back and just having something different and access to, you know, getting to the root of problems and mental health issues that skateboarders deal with, maybe when they can't skateboard anymore or they get hurt or they actually have to sit there with themselves and they realize there's underlying issues. Yeah, yeah, definitely not, 100% true. And then. I want, you know, a couple more questions. Um, what do you have coming up for uh, 2023 for with skateboarding or with West Side Recovery or anything? Uh, we're continuing to gr grow West Side Recovery as far as skateboarding. Uh, new Skate Mafia 2023 video will be dropping soon. Oh, shit. Um, lots of traveling and just same thing, filming, getting clips. Hell yeah, dude. You know, and helping people. That's awesome. And last question, what can you say to the upcoming skaters that want to be where you're at or want to go to your recovery? What can you say to them, like a good aspiring thing? Um, just um, don't get too si inside of your own head. Just realize, you know, you're not the only one going through things. And there's uh, as long as you reach out and just reach out to someone you trust and ask for help. Or if you're going struggling through skating and just don't be too hard on yourself about being good or how good you are, just realize we've all everyone progresses differently and uh, in our own unique way and it's and all of them are special so yeah we're all in this together and just keep pushing forward oh yeah and then is it, um, and this is the actual last question do you have the the one of the best memories you have for skateboarding like your whole entire life it's like something that will always stick out to you when you're like sitting in your car driving and looking out the window and just jamming out like something that sticks to your head that you always remember like man got you on that one <laughs> i'm so glad i picked up a skateboard that's my best memory hell yeah dude. that's a good one that's a good one well thanks brandon for coming on and um appreciate I wanna say, you for having me hell yeah hell, hell yeah. yeah and i want to say this is a wrap for tsm live show season six episode six check out my boy ray jones yep you know he's coming up next youth nation empire the label you know um D director of the West Side Recovery Music Program. It's about to do a live performance, so check it out. Definitely, definitely. And also, too, I want to say thank you for Prince Park for letting us have this episode Stop. here. Yeah. And I also, too, I want to say thank you to all our sponsors for making this season happen. And tune in next month for <laughs> TSM Live Show Season 6, Episode 7, because that's just going to be epic. Shop. Yeah, yeah. <laughs>
Trade the city before war shows. More calls, more hoes, more clothes, more shows. Addiction and foes. You know how it goes. Thank you, guys. It all started in the summer, green eyes, mesmerized, never would have thought I'd cut for my lady lover, feel it when I hug you, you're my better half and I'm a bad mother, Fool. it's the gift of the present, forget about the past, pour a glass, share a laugh, cherish good times we had, to all my loved ones who saw me stumble down the path to success, don't be sad, no regrets, it was rad, chilling with my homies, doing shows and chasing cash, and found myself a love I never ever thought I had, and yeah, I found myself on drugs, and never ever thought I'd last, and when the clouds Came above us, yeah, we never thought they passed, but they gone now Nigga, we on now So high off life, I could put this bomb down It was the wrong route, maybe for y'all clowns But I was taught to get back up when I fall down and live my life Each day I feel blessed, cause I would have been sorry If I didn't come back for you I know no matter where we roam or any place we go Everything's gonna be alright Each day I feel blessed, cause I would have been sorry If I didn't come back for you i know no matter where we roam or any place we go everything's gonna be they right. say good things only come to those who wait and i've been waiting all year just to feel this great like when we're chilling on the beach you help me kill my case girl i've been running through the jungle trying to seal my fate and it's funny how every day is sunny now yeah you help me down through the rain now it's sunny out yeah i lost a couple pounds on the road to run the town feeling lost and found off and down until you come around like collie buds text you just to follow up Seeing if you trying to puff, I'm kind of drunk Forgive me if I ask you if you trying to fuck Sorry just for popping up, the summer loves are popular I got the stuff that'll change your life like the condom bus Baby, we don't gotta rush, you roll the L, I light it up Laugh it off cause life is tough, embrace the angels guiding us If you didn't know, girl, we got that glow Your love is like a Xanax cause it calms my soul So I sing, each day I feel blessed cause I would have been sorry If I didn't come back for you I know no matter where we roam or any place we go everything's gonna be all right each day i feel blessed cause i would have been sorry if i didn't come back for you i know no matter where we roam or any place we go everything's gonna be all right Niggas know my body moving, walk you get smoke. Run it up, cause there's nowhere else to go. Hit the pot with my wrist, break the boat. Heart is cold, come around me, need a coat. I'm on a boat, private jet, smoking dope. All my niggas train to go. Got this shit up out the mud, I need a hose. Dirty dancing with the motherfucking pole. More money, nigga, you know how it goes. Racks in my jeans, Gucci down from head to toe. Told a pipe down, little bitch, I'm in my glow. Rock star, yeah, I'm in my mode. Niggas know my body, it's in my mind and on my soul. Run it up, cause there's nowhere else to go. Hit the pot with my wrist, break the bowl. Wide body doing donuts in the snow. Didn't have heat, so we had to use the stove. Now I'm Gucci down, she got Chanel on her toes. Yeah, I'm in town doing numbers on the road. Crash out, cause my mom ain't raised no hoes. TTG, all my niggas train to go. Racks in my jeans, Gucci down from head to toe. Throw the pipe down, little bitch, I'm in my glow. Rock star, yeah, I'm in my mo. Niggas know my body moving, walking, you get smoke. Run it up, cause there's nowhere else to go. Hit the pot with my wrist, break the bowl. All this cold, come around me, need a coat. I'm on a boat, private jet, smoking dope. All my niggas train to go. Got this shit up out the mud, I need a hose. Dirty dancing with the motherfucking pole. More money, nigga, you know how it goes. Racks in my jeans, Gucci down from head to toe. Thanks, everybody, I appreciate it.